Uh, students of the week, Cameron Ron Hawkins, Ethnic Studies, senior, as well as Yakari Walker, Kemia Hawkins and Yakari Walker, um, ethnic, both ethnic studies today, 30th anniversaries of the 30th anniversary of the miracle at Michigan. Cordell Stewart, 64 yards to Michael Westbrook, two of my favorite guys in this whole world. Um, tremendous play. Um, Travis Hunter, five straight 100-yard receiving games, longest streak in the nation, and a school record. Um, you know, the snaps. Tara was targeted zero times, was Baylor. Still had three tackles in the game, clinching uh, for a small defense. Russell has allowed just 19 points in the second half of the season and held Baylor to 313 total yards and 140 yards passing. We ranked ninth, na ninth nationally in the second half points. Great, great game. Testimony to uh, – our resilience and not giving up and the guys working to the end and a uh, tremendous fan base. Like I said, uh, at the conclusion of the game in the press conference, I don't condone how the students ran out, but I absolutely love every last minute of it. It was one of the most beautiful things I've ever witnessed in my life. I was just worried about guys on the field, us getting the penalty now, kick is blocked now, now, now the party's over. But uh, wonderful, wonderful win, wonderful win. Uh, Coach Malzahn, I, I love him. I appreciate him. He's one of my favorite coaches in college football. Um, the way he gave us love and showed us love and compassion when I think Shador was a sophomore or junior going up to a visit at, Al at Auburn, and uh, he offered him on the spot. It was tremendous. I love what he's brought to college football. Um, a lot of similarities. He does it his way, and I love the way he does it. Um, he's unapologetic. Uh, about the way he does it, and uh, he's with a bunch of Florida boys, which is my home state, which I absolutely adore, and it's going to be a great game. I look forward to the contest. They run the ball extremely well. They get to the ball on defense. Uh, pretty much a veteran team when you're looking at several uh, seniors on each side of the ball, so that's experience, a tremendous amount of experience, and uh, they don't make a lot of mistakes. Big quarterback, strong guy that can not only throw the football, but he could run as well, so we, we're we got a, our work cut out for us. Let's go. Hey, Coach. How you doing? Good. How are you? Nick Edwards, two sports report. As you mentioned, you're facing a run-heavy offense this week. How is Robert Livingston and the defense preparing for such a fit? Well, we got to load the box up and pray and, and stop the run. I, I feel good about our scheme. I feel good about what I saw at practice today. Um, I feel good about uh, what we've been accomplishing uh, versus the run. Defensively, we got to improve in some certain areas, but uh, I think we get Shadozi back this week as well. Um, that's a tremendous plus because of his attitude, his leadership, and the way he works. Tremendous plus. Hello, Brian. Hey, Coach Ryan Skulls from Ralph Airport. How are you doing? So you've been doing good. You've been really complimentary of Coach Malzahn mm -hmm. from Big 12 Media Day mm -hmm. on. He's been very complimentary to you as well. What does it mean to be coaching against a colleague and a friend like Coach Malzahn on such a big stage? Well, it's an honor. It's an honor. you got to understand, I was a little high school coach visiting those guys, taking my kids on the college tours. And uh, now to have the opportunity to coach on the same field, it's an honor. It's, it's a tremendous honor. And uh, I got love for him. I mean, after we played him, then I could call him for advice. I don't want <laughs> He's not going to give me advice before. But he, he's one of the guys that I would call for advice on certain situations that may, may occur uh, with college football players. I'm pretty sure everybody's dealing with uh, the uh, guys that, that wants the red shirt, and I think everybody's dealing with that right now. So you're having those meetings. We're not the only one having several meetings, but I'm pretty sure – uh, a host of college football coaches are having those, and I would like to know how they deal with certain situations. But maybe after the game. That's what Chip Kelly told me last year. <laughs> he said, after the game, you can call me. <laughs> hey, Coach, how you doing? How you doing, sir? Uh, Michael Monte, FI360 FI News. Uh, how's Shiloh and Dallin doing? And my second question is... Okay, one at a time. You know I'm old. I'm old. Okay, uh, Shiloh's on pace to... To be back, I'm not going to count out this week. I'm not going to count that out. But if he holds off this week, that'll give him two more weeks, which is pretty smart. Um, Hayden is going to play. He's going to play. He worked his butt off today. Looked great. Looked like he hadn't missed a beat. So he's going to play. Okay. 
And then Sotomayor, he's played so well. Carter's good. Yes. So going forward, could he be? Well, it gives you depth. Yeah. It gives you depth, uh, and you're able to do some things in a dime package. Carter can cover uh, tight ends. He could cover receiver. He could cover back. So he gives you depth. Um, you may want to take a linebacker off the field and put him down there and let him do his thing. But he's physical. He's strong. He's fast. He's smart. And he is gaining experience with every game. So I'm, I'm proud of that. Sometimes uh, things work out for the good, man. I mean, it, you, you hate for a guy like Shallow to go down, but Carter got a ton of experience, and he's not afraid to get out there and, and attempt to make a play. He's not just sitting out there trying to prevent plays. He's trying to make plays now. Hey, Coach, just what's it like for you and, you know, all the Florida guys on this uh, team to be able to go back to Florida this week? Well, it, it's good now until you get down there and play. you got to win. We don't want to go down there and, and think it's just a road trip, it's a field trip. We want to go down there and, and win. So we're practicing our butt off trying to make sure we dot I's and cross T's and we give it a valiant effort. It starts in practice. Everything starts in practice. I tell the kids this morning, you, you, it's like a vending machine. Whatever you put in, you're going to get out unless you want to go to Vegas and put a little bit in, you expect to get a lot out, but that's called gambling, where I'm from. And you don't want to gamble with your career, with your life, and uh, with the time you have left. So our Florida boys are excited, but they know we, we're, on, uh, we're on the job. It's on the job. I've got a pair of special teams questions for you. Obviously, Jace Feely went out in the last game. What is the plan with the kickoffs moving forward? Um, with Pelagio? Pelagio. 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 I said Pelagio? Where did I get that from? <laughs> I just said Vegas and Pelagio was in my mouth. <laughs> I, just, I just threw that together. I'm sorry. He did a phenomenal job coming in. We have several kickers that can, can do it. These guys compete on a daily basis. Even Mata um, can, can kick the ball off. We have several kickers that can do uh, a valiant job. The problem is we want the ball in the end zone. I mean, Jimmy does not get to return a ball when we're on a kickoff return, and we want that same sentiment. We don't want them to be able to return anything. If not, we just got to bloop kick it and hope they fair catch up or get down the field and stay in our lanes. And then we saw Jimmy come in late as the pump returner for LeJonte. Was that a permanent move? Or no, no, that was just timing. That was just timing. That was just something, you know, if I have that feeling that Jimmy may hit it a little harder, but LeJonte runs has a certain style. Jimmy has a certain style. I just thought we needed another style on that particular punt return. But no, LeJonte is the guy right now. Coach, hey, Coach, um, just with Omari and Miller, do you think we would be seeing an increased role from him moving forward? Well, the guys are rotate. I think they uh, rotate quite a bit. You know, he got in there and made a tremendous play. But uh, – we, we we got a plethora of receiver, man. You can close your eyes and pick. So I don't think it's it's any controversy. I think we know uh, Will Will is, is is the guy. He's a dog. Uh, Marion will come in and, and do his thing. And this stuff is established at practice, not in the game. It, it's the consistency at practice. That's how we choose who starts and who does not start. Taylor, Taylor, how you doing? Mm. But with that said, just seeing this run game being like more dynamic as it goes on. But um, with that said, uh, seeing that being improved, like how does that look in your eyes? Like, in we still got so much farther to go, and we could do so much better. We just got to hold our blocks. We got to stay low. We got to be a lot more physical, and uh, not just the coaches, the players. You got to have a commitment to that. Like you got to when you hear that run call, you know, signal in from the sideline. You got to say, all right, it's not going to be me. I'm going to whoop my man. You, you got to have that thing in you that you, you, you know is coming behind you. Let's go. And we could call a hundred runs, but they got to they got to purposely do do what we ask them to do. Um, but you you want to run to just take pressure off the passing game because now you play action and it holds that linebacker just a step. Next thing you know, Jimmy and Lejante get behind those backers and, and we got action. And everyone knows, man, all you got to do is just give two, three seconds and we're good. I think everybody in the nation knows that. All you guys know that in here, ladies and gentlemen, that you give him uh, well, two seconds, he's good. Hey, Coach, Tyler King with the Denver Gazette. Um, just going back to the, all the Florida guys on the team, you, you've talked many times in the past about how much you like to recruit players in Florida, yeah. obviously being there from, from there yourself. Just in your experience throughout, throughout your life, what has made Florida players so different? That hunger, that thirst, that will, that want, that that me against the world, that we don't have the best of things, but we're going to make the most of things. Uh, the way our parents 
came up the desolate and turbulent times that we've come through, the naysayers, the haters. Um, I, Florida may have the least paid high school coaches in the country, but may produce the most athletes in the country. I don't know how that happens. Um, even when it comes to facilities, um, I'm sure Texas is number one when it comes to facilities and Florida still putting out dogs. I don't know if anybody have done a, a study lately, but in the NFL, I'm pretty sure Florida's ranked up there pretty darn high and it's not a huge state, but I'm, I'm speaking so one of the kids just asked us this question, and Sap just took over that conversation and let them know, if you want to put an all-pro team out there with Florida boys, we got one. So that just happened That just happened in the game, uh, before the game in the cafeteria the night before. So one of the guys was talking about Georgia was like that, and uh, Sap had to check him on that. <laughs> hey, Coach, how part of Colorado, how are you feeling? How you doing? I'm doing well. Um, obviously, you guys uh, mismatched a little bit with the offensive line on Saturday. I think mm -hmm. uh, Mayors came in for uh, Khalil at one point, and then Khalil came back in for, for Phillip. Is that a unit that you think is going to continue to kind of be tinkered with um, well, moving forward, or how do you kind of feel that unit is at? The goal and the dream is really to play eight of those guys, to rotate eight. That's what you want to do. You want to keep guys fresh, keep them consistent, keep them hungry, keep them physical, uh, just keep them uh, competitive. You want to do that. If we could do that, wow, that, it's wonderful. You don't want to just consistently play five guys for the entire year, especially with the day and age of the portal. So you, you want to kind of rotate those guys, but it all starts with practice. You got to show us that you're rotatable in practice, and then uh, Phil will do his thing. He's pretty smart when it comes to that. Jack, go ahead. Thank you, Jack. Jack Harlow. Big recruiting for you guys, big recruiting weekend for uh -huh. you guys this past weekend and commitment yesterday. Just overall, how do you feel like this 2025 class is coming along? I thought we got three. Three One that was announced. Okay, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't suppose to say nothing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Um, but how do you feel like the 2025 class is coming along? So pretty, pretty good, but you you got to understand, man, it's – you have to look at your roster. You got to balance that between high school guys, portal guys, what you have coming back. It, it's a balancing act. It's, it's no one way to do it. I think everyone knows that. It's no one way to do it. Now, you know, I know we get criticized for going in the portal, but if you talk about other teams and how much they went in the portal, it, it, it ranks right up there with everyone else, but we're just the portal kings, it, it, it seems to be. You know? And that's not the case. Um, we have uh, a few freshmen playing and doing a phenomenal job right now. I think uh, I gave you a statistic one week of how many freshmen we played last year, even freshmen walk-ons. Um, they got in there and got some experience. So I think we're doing a good job with the guys from high school, but also the guys from Portal. It's just like the NFL to me, man. It's free agency. Free agency and draft choices. You don't take a lot of draft choices, but you, you get what you need in free agency. Hey, Coach Brian. How, how you doing, Brian? Good. How are you? Good. Yeah, two questions for you on one at a time. Uh, four, four games into this season, you're third of the way through. Mm -hmm. uh, where is this team as far as like what your expectations were at this point? Well, you're never going to reach my expectations. That, that's not going to be garnished. That, that you, you, you can't reach that because I think big. You know, I have big, lofty dreams and lofty aspirations for each and every one of these kids on the field as well as off the field. So we're getting there. We're getting closer. But uh, the one thing that I could honestly and wholeheartedly say, um, we're getting better every week in different facets of the game. You, you know darn well you can't compare last year's defense to this defense or the offense as well. You see progress. You see uh, um, certain positions. And you see certain even young guys saying, OK, that guy, another year, so he's going to be phenomenal. I mean, I know Shador and Travis uh, take the headlines, but it's a lot of other guys doing some phenomenal jobs out there, just giving them the opportunity to shine. So I appreciate that. Uh, second question is, uh, you guys have the luxury of having obviously really good secondary and guys that you can go one-on-one -on -one with yeah. your corners. Uh, how big of a deal is that for uh, the impact it's made on the front seven well, where they're, they're able to play better against the It was a big deal until last week when, you know, we got our butts kicked a couple times on, on some deep balls, which was, is unlike us. Um, that's not who we are. We, we, we're trying to shore that up right now. We, we're on their bus today at practice tremendously. But 
we have some guys that can flat out play man and uh, they'll do a better job in the future, I promise you that. Um, but it, it helps us tremendously. We just got to get home more with the pass rush. We, we, we got to get more hits on the quarterback. We got to get home more. We, we must uh, apply more pressure on the quarterbacks because we have the pass rushers to do it. Um, at this point in time, I, I thought we would be farther along um, with sacks and applying pressure on uh, the quarterbacks. I do, but we're doing a great job of, of getting to the ball and, and coming there as a pack and, and making things happen. Coach, I think it was a Packer associate press that two part by Brian Ellis asking two parts. Um, number one is you guys are obviously leaving Wednesday because of the storm. Your creature of habit, how much does that affect your players and, and you and what you're trying to get done when you have to leave early and adjust your game? Well, our players like simplicity, and I do too. So I don't want to take a chance of we're going to leave Thursday anyway. So the storm is supposed to hit Thursday. So we don't want to take that chance and the storm hits Thursday. Now we can't get there to Friday evening. Now it's a rush. So we're trying to get ahead of the curve and be smart with it. Um, our guys like consistency. So being settled and having a consistent plan in place works in our favor. We've already secured practice facilities. We already, I think, sent the truck on the road. Um, we're right where we want to be. We're just going to make it consistent as possible for our young men. Special teams has been very dependable for you guys, and you kind of struggled a little bit. And yeah. Return, return. Do you not panic, or do you kind of, you know, knowing that it was like a, or how do you address that? No, I don't have panic in me. I don't. I don't have that. You address that by doing your job. We kick the ball in the end zone. That doesn't happen. Um, we make that tackle on that punt return. That doesn't happen. So you either make those plays or get somebody to make those plays. As simple as that. Two more. Go ahead, John. Hey, Coach John Treach, Nine News. The sports world is, is captivated and, and, and impressed with the flair for dramatic. Does this experience feel as cinematic to you? What does cinematic mean? I don't know. I'm what sorry. Do you like? um, no. Um, we're thankful. We're appreciative that the game turned out like it did, but we had to work to, to come back to get that opportunity. Um, and we had a couple opportunities. We had several plays that we hit that were called back that we're not proud of. Um, we allowed some opportunities to happen defensively that we're not proud of. We feel like we shouldn't have been in that situation to make that happen. We're thankful that we did, but we, we feel like we're the idiots that put ourselves in that situation to make it happen, and we don't want to do that again. We, we feel like we're better than that. We really do. But we're extremely thankful and appreciative that our men didn't give up and they came through. Last one, go ahead, Matt. Hey, Coach. Travis typically steals the headlines as far as the Heisman. Mm -hmm. How do you feel Shadur has played through four games this year? You look across the board and his numbers are just as high as I think every other quarterback. Shador played, has played great except for one pass. That's it. I don't know how, how else to say it. He's played great. He's been consistently Shador, except for one pass. The thing about him, everyone in here, but maybe a couple of y'all, you know with the ball in his hands, we got a chance. Everybody in here knows that, right? Except a couple of haters, you know that. But I'm not directing that at nobody. That's just how I talk, I'm sorry. I'm not directing it at, at, at nobody. But everybody on the team feels that way. Nobody sits down. And uh, that last drive that, that we have the ball, everybody on the sideline is up. They know we got a shot. Um, so I'm, I'm pleased with him. Um, I, I'm critical because I'm dad as well as coach. On the dad side, I know certain things that he could do better. On the coach side, I'm like, all right, we got to do this, 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 and you got to do this, this, this. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little more in depth, Dad. I'm a probably a little tough on him, tougher on him than anybody. I do have one other non-football. We got it. Is that okay. Uh, last week, Shohei Otani plays for the Dodgers. Yeah. Flips 50-50 for the first time yeah. as a former Major League Baseball player yourself. Unbelievable. Wondering, what are your thoughts on Otani? It, it don't make sense. I think the only person that probably could have done that was uh, Conseco or Barry Bonds. How close was Barry? 40, 40. Yeah. I, well, he did 40-40. That, that was for breakfast. He did that for breakfast. <laughs> but, I mean, how close was Barry? Barry had to be close in some years, didn't he? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure on the, how close he was, but he was close. Yeah, but all the, with all the walks, he should have definitely. 
been close at some point. I never checked his, his uh, stolen bases because his home runs, he, he just went crazy, you know, with the home runs after a while. But uh, the greatest baseball player I've ever played with and, and seen live has to be Barry Bonds and Ricky Henderson. I love me some Ricky Henderson. God, I love me some Ricky Henderson. I, I, I wanted to be Ricky Henderson, and that was my man. And getting an opportunity to play with him, I was like a kid in a candy shop. I didn't know nothing about baseball whatsoever. And I'm sitting on the on the bench with Ricky Henderson, giving, getting stolen base tips. That's when baseball was truly baseball, and I loved every minute of it. Didn't know what I was doing, but I loved it. But Atani is, is that that he's incredible, man. I mean, you could compare him to the Jordans and and uh, those uh, person Tom Brady's of the world. That's that's who he is. He's doing things that we haven't fathomed. Barry had 42 and 40 in 1996. Yeah, he probably just stopped running because he was. A, <laughs> he, he probably stopped because they walked him every darn time, right? He could have stole a man. Excuse me. No, I, but he walked. What I'm saying, he stayed on base, right? They walked him during the. So Every time, yeah. yeah. And plus, you got to think about this now. Baseball is different. How many times you can throw over now? Uh, two per, two per, per yeah, you imagine Ricky Henderson, you could just throw over two times a year. <laughs> He'll be at third. He'll just cut across the grass, man. He'll just <laughs> go, go ahead and get it over with. He, Ricky was unbelievable, man. But, I mean, those the rules kind of helps a little bit. That's not taking anything away from Otani because he is undarn believable, man. So... But Barry Bonds, they walked him almost every turn at bat. So if he wanted to steal, I'm pretty sure he could have had 60, something like that. What is the big best, the biggest home run year he had? Oh my God! Yeah, well, that's the greatest ever to me. Yeah, Barry Bonds. You have 52 bags in 1993. In 90? Yeah, it was Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yeah. That was before all the other stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm saying they, they, they just hated on him. He had three MVPs before they even started oh, accusations, right? He has a whole yeah. Hall of Fame careers. So yeah. yeah, but why isn't he? I mean, he should be in the Hall of Fame. Don't make sense. I, I, I saw it. It's not you telling me something. I, I was there. <laughs> yeah, I was there. I was in the dugout. I, mean, I saw him at batting practice. I saw his dad throwing short toss in there. I, I, I saw it. I saw him on a daily basis. It, it, the dude was undarn believable, man. If you threw that ball anywhere in his zone, he was, it was a souvenir. It was a souvenir. That's how good he was. I love you, Barry. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Oh,